Okay, 2013 module 3 problem solving process has several stages follow which when followed may lead to optimal solution level and discuss the importance of the analyze the problem stage okay this stage seeks to get more information about who um, the problem is affecting and what the core issues are. It uses various data gathering techniques to get this done. Alright, discuss and propose two tools using the Analyze the Problem stage. Alright, two tools. That has two data gathering techniques. So we want to see questionnaires. Um, we could say interviews. Questionnaires, they gather quantitative, quanti, quantitative, a lot of you, A N T I T A T I E, quantitative data that, that primarily takes the form of closed ended questions and um, it is easy to analyze. All right, that will be good enough for three marks. Interviews, they gather um, qualitative information in the form of open-ended answers that give more in-depth responses to queries, no, to what issues exist. Okay. But the information available for a given problem solving scenario may be categorized in one of the ways to stick below. Explain any two ways are the following. So, any two, the easiest to do is essential and desirable. Um, cosmetic, easy to do. You can do either one. So, extraneous has nothing to do with the actual problem, and you can do without it. Desirable can be useful in useful in figuring out um, the problem, but it it is not absolutely necessary. Right. Essential is absolutely necessary. Without it, the problem cannot be solved. Cosmetic may relate to the to the problem. They relate to the problem, but has to do with the look and you. Alright, Carlos finds a flyer while waiting at the bus stop. The flyer advertises a method of earning US $5,000 per week for life by investing US $10 using a credit card at the website listed on the flyer. Carlos is very interested in the opportunity or wishes to get additional information. Explain why the website listed may not be trustworthy. So how do we know the website may not be trustworthy? Because there is no, um, no company name listed. So it may not have any credibility here. Yeah. So credibility is like the word that you're looking for. No company listed is like the AC, right? What? I will get out already. Okay, so I am going to erase all this because I have to work it over. Alright, so number eight is algorithms are useful tools in the problem solving process because they require the user to identify a systematic approach to the solution of the problem. Examine the algorithm below. All right, explain the function of the algorithm above. So we have to figure out what this algorithm is actually doing. So it is setting sum to zero, counter to zero, and it's going to go from X is equal to one to 20. So we're going 20 times. So checking to see if X mod three is equal to zero. So that means mod is finding the, um, the, mult, the result of a division, the remainder of a division. So if you divide by three and you get a remainder of zero, that means it's a multiple of three. So we're trying to find the multiples of three. If we, um, every time we find a multiple of three, we're carrying up a counter by one and we're carrying up the sum by one. So we find the sum of, if X is a multiple of three, it's the sum of X plus the sum. So how mod works is, um, Let's say I, I do um, 3 mod 3, the result will be 3 into 3 is 1, remainder 0. I am concerned about this 0 as what, as what matters there to me. If I go 4 mod 3, that will be equal to 1, remainder 1. So this is the mod here. That's why I want to keep that. 
So if I get a zero, that means I divide it by a multiple of three because three is a multiple of three. So like if I do six mod three, I will get six. So six divided by three will give me two remainder zero. So that means six is a multiple because I get a remainder of zero, right? So we're trying to find, we're trying to count all the um, multiples of three that we get and find the sum. So the function of the algorithm is to find the sum of, um, no, after we find the sum of them, we divide them by the counter. So that means we're trying to find the average actually, because we're dividing the sum by the counter. So the total amount divided by the total that you counted. So find the average of all the multiples of three between one and twenty inclusive mm -hmm. inclusive and print them i forget the unprint them part because you're printing the counter and you're printing easy stay the output of the algorithm hmm. the output of this algorithm is going to be if we were to trace table it we'll have to trace table it and we start to put um x is one basically gonna find every um multiple of three so it's going to start with three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen that'll be all the multiples of three so i have to add up all of that and divide it by how much i need one two three four five six all right so the sum of all is divided by six eighteen Wow, addition sucks. 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, and 9 is 18. 18 and 12 would be 30. 30 plus 15 is 45. 45 plus 18 is 55. 60, 63. Are you 63? Let me check that again. 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, and 9 is 18. 18 and 12 would be 30. 30 plus 15 is 45. 45 plus 18 is 55. 45 plus 8 is 55. 55 plus 8. See, see. again. Okay. All right. Ten and a half. Ten point five. All right. The output is counter is equal to six. Average or z z is equal to ten point five. Cool. Design a flowchart to represent this algorithm. All right. So let's go flowcharting now. We have to start off with um, a start of course, which will be sum equal to zero and counter equal to zero, and then we have four x is one to twenty. But you can't represent a for loop in a flowchart, so you have to convert it to a while loop. So your condition will be we had a setting x is equal to one here first, then we'll get a diamond, and the diamond is going to be x less than or equal to 20. Once x is less than or equal to 20, we have a yes, and that yes is going to meet us that diamond with a if. If x mod 3 is equal to 0, that's our question. x mod 3, are you equal to 0? The answer is yes. Okay. Is happening here is yes and we're going to say counter equal to counter plus one sum equal to sum plus x and then if it's not then well after the if here is going to do x is equal to x plus one x is equal to x plus one that goes like that and we're gonna have the next point it's going to loop back up going to loop, loop back up here and when it's all done it's going to say z is equal to sum divided by counter and then we're going to print counter which is going to be a parallelogram and then we're going to stop seems uh, seems about right yep that looks like it there yeah. cut off look after six marks i'm not too sure but that's the answer how they marking it i can't always say all right now we have this part here all right the following algorithm was designed to accept numeric values representing temperature readings for a week it should then calculate the average of the temperatures entered and print the value however the algorithm results in a program which freezes the computer on which it is running explain the source of the problem the source of the problem is why is it causing it to freeze so we set all these things those are good all those things set to zero temperature is set to zero while temperature is not 999 we have temperature is zero so it will start to read it'll read a temperature whatever temperature we read from the user it's going to add that up and once the user number 999 or sum divided by count count is zero the value of count never changes from zero so you have a, a, a runtime error all right rewrite the algorithm 
them with the necessary corrections. Basically, I had to put in the count inside here. Right before there, you had to put count is equal to count plus one. That's all algorithm picks. Because now you're putting a counter in place so that when you do this division here, you'll actually have a number because the while loop is this block of this block right here. So you want to include that in the block in the while loop. So you keep a counter. All right. After algorithms have been developed, it is common to develop programs based on these algorithms. Use a diagram to illustrate the stages in the program development process. All right, that's part of your plan. Analyze, develop, implement, review. All right, that's what we're looking at. So analyze, develop, implement, and review. Explain each of the following programming paradigms. Give given one example of a programming language in each case. Um, all right, so object-oriented would be based on classes and objects. Example, C++. Functional, based on breaking large programs into modules. Example, C++. Procedural, based on step-by-step -step instructions. Example, Pascal. C and Pascal, I mean, yeah. Pascal can be functional, but C more functional than anything functional than Java could be one too. Alright, assembly programming is not popular for the development of typical application software, but it's still quite useful to identify two advantages of assembly. It's speed and it is um, no compiling needed. So speed means it is it has a very fast execution time. Um, no compiling needed means there are no issues with translation for the computer. Identified two disadvantages would be um, complexity. Um, assembly is hard to understand by humans and portability it cannot be easily transferred to other systems all right any program written in a typical high level programming language contains various control structures explain each of the control structures below sequence is step by step instructions example get a get b c is equal to a plus b selection Choosing from two options based on a condition. If A is greater than two, then yes, else no. A little example will always help you with these questions. Iteration, repeating a set of commands based on the state of a condition. So while X is equal to 10, print yes and while. All right, yep, that's it there for module three.